Hello. Hello. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm a little beat, but it's going is is going good for the for the most part, I guess. It's uh, let's get this bus rolling. Okay. Get it That's tomorrow, bus. and that is it for us today. <laughs> and we will leave you with a. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. Yes, sir. Uh, we always doing it live over here. Well, welcome back to another episode, y'all. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and welcome to the Lockout Men podcast show. The show where the bus don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Get it? Bus stop? <laughs> that is what's up. That is what's up, man. But I'm... I'm glad you guys here. I want to welcome everybody from the LOM community because we always simulcast live here. If you guys have any questions or want to chime in or say what's up, do so. Do so. We're right here chilling. That's how we do it here at the pod, at the Lockout Men Podcast Show. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more awesomeness. Make sure you hit that all button too. You know what I'm saying? So that when I pop up, you guys will come in, you know, jump right in. Just pop right on in. That's how y'all do it over here. If you guys want to support the show and support me, get me some coffee while I'm doing this job for you guys. Hook me up at the Cash App or the Coffee App. There's both of them in the description. Cash App, Lockout Men, dollar sign, Lockout Men. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. Well, today... I want to bring back to the show young lady that came in say about a couple of months ago before the before this pandemic. No, no, no. I think it was it was during the pandemic. I think. Yes, it was. It was just in the beginning. It was doing. It was just. It was just starting. Just. It was just starting and just getting good uh, mm -hmm. at the pandemic. <laughs> Let's see. Shadows of Darkness. What's going on with you? I see you. I see you. What I want to bring back to the show, she's a friend of the show. She's a, bu a school bus driver, but I think uh, I think she might not be a bus driver no more. But we'll get into all of that when uh, when she comes on to talk. I want to welcome back to the show, Miss Sunny Rob. <laughs> All over the place. All over the place. Sunny Rob, what's going on? How you doing? I'm well. How about you? I'm doing all right. You know, for starters, you know, I'm over here picking up at this BS place. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about the places where I pick up from because you know my uh my company do watches my podcast. What's going on, company? How y'all doing out there? I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, but this place I was at, man, so ridiculous. It's, it, they, you know, they, you, you, you get a pickup number and then you, you give it to them and then they turn around and tell you, oh, well, we need another pickup number. But then when you call your dispatcher and say, hey, they need another pickup number, but it's the only pickup number that you got. You go back to them and they'd be like, okay, well, we don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm 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 picking up recyclable. You are? Mm. What we we never heard anybody picking up recyclables. So they had to put they had to put me over in a corner, like put baby in a corner. That that's what they did me. You know, they they put me in a corner, you know. Sorry, uh, you know, I forgot I, I forgot his name, but Sorry, they they put me in the corner, but um, they came back, uh, sent somebody over to the truck about two hours later, two hours, you hear me? Two hours later, not not an hour later, two hours later. But luckily, when I got into the dock, the dude got me loaded about thirty minutes. And I don't, how come some places can load you faster than others? 
I don't get it. Like some places take God, God awful time, but you, you know, you get to this one place. Yo, I have you loaded in a minute. Oh, okay, bro. All right. I, I wish I had. I wish I had some change. I would give you a tip. <laughs> you know, other places. Oh be yeah. Like, other places be like, oh well, we gotta go back. We're we're switching up. Uh, we're on lunch break. Uh, we gotta find the product. Mm-hmm. We got to go and get the product. <laughs> we got to do it one at a time. The product is all the way on the other side of the building. And and I'm just, mm-hmm. you know, sitting there wasting time. Like, bro, come on. Oh, man. But this is what we signed up for, right? This, this is what we signed up yeah. for. I mean, you, you, yeah. you we, mm-hmm. we signed up for this. You know, we, we come in inspecting big things, but you know, sometimes we gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. But what about you, Sonny? Well, this is true. What about you? I uh <laughs> last time last time we spoke, you was um you was on pause from from the bus company uh because of the pandemic and everything. But now that school is coming back into play, uh where where we at now? Where where we at? Well, we weren't sure for a while. Uh, but it appears that we will be going back to school on September 8th. Mm-hmm. Uh, the district that I service, um, they are going to be doing what's called a hybrid option, which means hybrid. that uh, the kids will go to school for a couple of days mm-hmm. and um, go remotely at home for a couple of days. Hmm. So there, there are several districts in, in our state that are doing that. There are also some other districts that have decided to do all remote from home until the beginning of next year, meaning 2021. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, it's been, you know, everybody's been on eggshells because we don't know, we hadn't known from one minute to the next, you know, what we were going to be doing. And even though we do have a start date, there's always a possibility that if the counts go back up, that they will decide to just have everyone go remote until November or December. Now, you now, of course, you you up in Jersey, you know, New York, Northeast area, uh, the area that was hardest hit with the uh, with with the pandemic um, with with you guys, that's 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 going back to school how are they going to how are they going to make it safe for safe for you guys to take the students to school well see this is this is a huge headache for uh, the boards of education and for us because basically the cdc said that they they really want one child in every other row and we drive 54 passenger buses and we can only accommodate 11 kids at one time. So the districts have been asking, uh, the district, sorry, <laughs> the districts have been asking parents, would you be willing to drive their children to school? Many of them are taking, you know, taking the school up on that. Um, but of course there are going to be parents that will need transportation for their kids so we're going to you know do our best to accommodate those who need it okay okay now now uh, of course majority of the kids uh that you guys pick up are from minor minority play minority places and of course you know they come from you know single parent homes where the one parent you know have to be at work and they can't uh, you know, take they mm-hmm. take their kids to school or pick them up for that matter because they probably might still be at work. You know what I'm saying? So, by yeah. but by them, but by them, uh, by them asking them, that's that's a big, that's a big, that's a big push right there. Uh, attitude, at att- attitude. You say, uh, Nada, bro, we are talking, who are we talking to today? I'm late. I am talking to the great 
Miss Sunny Rob in the building. So we're we're chopping chopping it up with her. She's a she's a school bus driver uh, up in Jersey, and she's just telling us, you know, how they getting things back together as far as getting the students back into the schools. Um, now, as far as you guys go, uh, would it still be the same picking them up in the morning and dropping them down? I mean, dropping them off at night? I mean, dropping them off in the evening? Uh, actually, it, it depends. Most of the kids who are going to in-school instruction now are only going for four hours oh. instead of, you know, six to seven. Yeah. So it, one day a driver might be driving kids to school in the morning and the next day driving kids to school in the afternoon because uh, the district that we drive for is, is so big that uh, they've had to split the student body into three sections and do one section on in the morning on one day one section in the afternoon on the next day because they need all that time to clean and sanitize everything. It's really, it's a logistical nightmare. I, I can imagine. It, I can imagine. It is a logistical nightmare. And uh, it's, it's really not good for us as well because we are considered one of the most high risk groups to catch this stuff because yeah. we're, Enclosed. <laughs> now, let me ask you, you this: know, We're you, enclosed in this thing. In, in your opinion, do you think do do you think sending the students back to school without any uncertainty, in your opinion, do you think that's the right thing to do, or do you think they need to just take some more time off until they actually figure this thing out? You know, in a perfect world. Uh, I think it would be better to just keep everyone home and just let it pass. However, like you were saying before, you have so many parents that depend on school, you know, not just for learning, but for having their child in, in an adult supervision because they can't be home. They have to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they need that assistance. Now you, so, now, you know, kids, I, I can understand it. Now, you know, kids brings germs like they, oh, yes, they <laughs> kids do. bring germs. So you're on the school. But you know, we, you, you know, we call them. Go ahead. We call them walking. We call them walking Petri dishes. I know. <laughs> right. I mean, a kid could a kid could like <laughs> literally wipe his nose and slap hand with the other kid. Like, hey, what's going? No, how you doing, brother? Like, yo, bro, you just, uh. and they look at it oh, and laugh yeah. it. They look at it and oh, laugh yeah. it off. Like, yeah, you, you know, <laughs> they look nasty. Like, yo, you just gave me Corona. Get the fuck away from me. Oh, <laughs> oh, you should see the stuff. I mean, they wipe, they wipe their snot on the windows. Oh, it's, you know, they think it's funny. Like they I, dig up, let, they, they dig up me, their nose and grab a oh, booger yeah. out and. And wipe their <laughs> names on the window and all like that, and you go back there and like, oh god, yes, really? They do. Oh, they do. Little, little Johnny, they really do Johnny, Johnny. I I know you didn't, oh, yeah. Johnny. Get back on the bus, like, yo. Did you see my name, Miss Sunny Rob? You seen my name? Like, yeah. You, know, you, you gave my bus Corona. Get 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 your ass in the back somewhere. So as far as the kids on the uh -huh. bus, um, how how they gonna do the the social distance thing on the bus? Well, this is this is what the plan is anyway. First of all, they are supposed to have their temperatures taken before they get on the bus. I believe the district that, that we service are relying on the parents to have their you know to take their temperature before they come to the stop. You know that's uh, not when happen. um <laughs> no, some parents are going to like, yeah, just go, mm -hmm. you know, but. Um, the way, that, the way that we're supposed to have them distancing on the bus is you have one child um, in every other seat and they have to wear masks and it has to be a catty corner seat. 
as well. It can't be like, you know, like if you're sitting on the left-hand side, you know, of the seat. Oh, you, one there can't be a the kid right. on the right-hand oh, okay. side. Okay, so it would be right, left, right, left, yeah. right, left, right, left. Yep. Every yep. other seat. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. That's that's gonna make for yeah. <laughs> that that's gonna make for uh social commute. Hey Johnny, yeah, how you doing? I'm well, doing all yeah. right. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh can we slap it? No, we can't slap hands. Damn it, man. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as far as you go, uh of course you the bus driver gonna have a mask on, of course. Um Yes. So do you drive with another person on the bus? Uh, like I think it's an assistant or something like that, or is it just you and Not the kids? Like an aide? Yeah, an aide. Or is it just you and the kids? Well, for gen, no, for general education kids, uh, then kids that ride the big bus, we don't have aides. Okay. Uh, we rely on the kids to behave, mm -hmm. and you know, we, we usually know when there's an issue going on and we'll just pull over and, and deal with it. But uh, the special needs children um, in the state of New Jersey, their their buses require an aid. OK, OK. So as mm -hmm. far now, if there's an aid on the bus, of course, you sitting in the driver's seat, the aid is going to have to like sit on the far side, maybe a couple of seats down from from you. Right. OK. Well, okay. basically, the the the, opti the optimal way to do it, and the way that that you know we're we're trained to do it, um, is to have the aid sit in back of the children, so okay. that that he or she can have a full view of what's going on. So that's the way it's supposed to be done. Doesn't always work that way, because so sometimes you have um, kids that are quite severely affected and can't control themselves. So the aide would have to sit with them. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So at that time, uh, uh, a while back, uh, you was under contract. Um, I think, I, I think you sent me, you know, we was, we was chatting it up in the, in the, in Instagram. And I think you sent me something to the effect that they let it all you guys go. And, and now, now. Yeah, I'll tell you, we we had a we had a really we had a really really we had a really <laughs> anxiety filled spring and summer. Mm -hmm. uh, we were uh, laid off, and then we were brought back, and then they terminated all of us. And there was the reason they said the reason that they did that was uh, basically so we could collect unemployment because we can't collect unemployment over the summer normally. Oh, OK. And um, so they they did that so we could collect unemployment. Plus the fact the second reason that they let us go was that they 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 had no roots for us for the following year, meaning up this upcoming year. Mm -hmm. So um, I think around I think toward the end of July, you know, it was toward the end of, uh, excuse me, toward the end of July, they were able to secure uh, another group of routes from another district. Okay. So we were able to retain some drivers and go back to work, <laughs> fortunately. And, and you, you're one of them, right? Yeah, well, yes, I'm a I'm a little different. I'm I'm a substitute driver, and in our company, substitutes are treated a little differently. Uh, okay. We um, we are considered more full time employees. Uh, we will just be available to um, assist and substitute any route that comes up. Uh, I also do training. So that stayed, so so that you was consistently stay busy, so you could consistently continue to make oh, money. Oh yeah, uh, you you are a class every day. Yeah. You are a class A driver, though, right? I am. Yes, I, right. I have a class A license. So have you uh, doing this? You know, doing this time off and everything. Have you put in any consideration of going into uh, going into the truck? 
Yes, I did. Uh, I seriously considered it, especially after we were terminated. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we really were very concerned about what was going on. Um, and then I started to hear, you know, noises that, you know, don't, don't jump yet. Uh, um, because it, it appears we were going to get something, but yes, I had, I had definitely, I had definitely uh, considered it. I had a discussion with my son who's in college mm -hmm. and you know, I, I was ready. <laughs> I was ready to do it. <laughs> but you got, if need be. but uh, luckily, luckily for you, you got the call though. And now you, now you're back. Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. Yes. So and hopefully, you know, there's, I just talked to one of my bosses today mm -hmm. and I asked, I said, you know, if we have another issue where the, the schools get shut down, are we going to be con continued to get paid? And he said, I don't know. Now, that's mm. not very reassuring, but, mm. um, <laughs> exactly. you know, I, I, still, I still intend to go back to work there. But, you know, there's always that underlying question that if there's another problem and, and the district can't pay us, well, you know, then I have, then I have to do something about now, that. Now during this, now during this pandemic, we, we got a, uh, and, and the schools opening back up, the economy's opening back up, but now we're in a new normal of sorts. Uh, you, you being in the, in the hardest hit area, um, what's your, what's your opinion on this, on this mass controversy? Uh, some people don't want to marry. I mean, marry. Some people don't want to wear it. Some people. Some people says mm -hmm. that you know it's not constitutional to wear it. Where do you stand on all right. of that? Uh, you know, I'm a Libra, so I always see both sides, um, and I truly can can understand you know both sides of it. But I do wear one when I go out, and I'm going to be in public. Uh, I, you know, if I'm going out for a walk, uh, at my complex, I don't wear one because I'm outside. I do make a very pointed effort to social distance and it's our, you know, the, the, the governor here said, if you're outside and you're social distancing, that you don't need to wear a mask, but if you cannot social distance then you do need to wear one, so it is. Sonny? Sonny? Yep. Oh, there you go. There you go. You kind of yep. you kind of went blank there for a minute. You you were saying your governor was what now? Oh, our governor said that uh, if we are outside and we're able to social distance, then we don't have to wear a mask. But if we cannot social distance, then we must wear one. Okay, so the governor. Oh, that's outside. So the governor, where you at? Is 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 he is he pushing it as far as trying to make it into law? You know, trying to make it mandatory for you guys to um, to um, oh yeah, he to, already did to wear to wear the mask. Yeah, he already did. He said Ooh. that you know if you're inside, you have to wear one. Period. And if you're outside, you have to wear one unless. You can stay more than six feet away from people. Oh. If you can do that, then you don't have to wear one. Oh, okay, okay. What's the what's the penalty? Mm -hmm. Yep. What's the penalty on that if you if you don't? D Nitty, what's going on, bro? What's going on? What's the penalty? 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 Pendle pen you, you know what I'm about to say. Penalty on that <laughs> if if somebody get caught without wearing uh, a mask? You know, it's, I'm going to say, I believe it's $250 fine, but I don't know because, you know, I, I do what I'm, do what I'm told. So <laughs> I'm not worried about, you know, about, a, about a fine. So, but I, I think I, I think I did read that it was 250. I, I think I believe. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, Sonny Rob, um, a lot of a lot of plans uh, that was planned this year, uh, unfortunately, had, had to be changed. Uh, you're part of the Stoop, uh, the Zello Channel 
uh, the Zello Channel uh, group. Uh, are you still are you yes, still a part, are you still a part of that group? I yes, I am. All right, so they were supposed to get together uh, for the truckers feeding the homeless this year. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't I haven't caught any of uh, Choice Mass's uh, uh, live feeds or anything on YouTube. You know, he's been you know he's been off the radar for 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 a minute. But I was just kind of wondering what's the you know what's the prognosis of of truckers feeding the homeless Baltimore this year. You know, that I have to say too, I have, even though I'm still part of it, I haven't really spoken with anybody in a while. Uh, the last I knew, Choice had an issue with his ankle and oh, okay. he wasn't even driving. Um, and that's my understanding of it. Okay. Um, but I myself have been really, really busy here since, um, since my time off from the company. Um, I, I did a major downsizing mm-hmm. from a, a house that I used to own, and it took me quite a long time to get everything moved out. And I'm uh, actually renovating a condominium so i have been i have been really really focused and uh busy doing that and also you Uh-oh. know Uh-oh. trying to make sure that i'm ready to take you you breaking you breaking up you breaking you up you breaking up okay <laughs> you breaking up steve austin Sorry. steve uh, austin <laughs> Sonny Rob down, <laughs> but you know, you said you stopped, uh, you said, uh, you said that you was, uh, renovating. So the, the condominium that you're renovating is yours. It is. Yes. Oh, okay. uh, I downsized. Okay. Yes, I did. So I, I bought one that was in disrepair. Mm-hmm. I, I bought a condo that was in disrepair. So we've been working on it pretty much. Most of the spring and the summer, I'm almost done. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just have the kitchen to go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I hope, uh, I hope yeah. my man, I hope my man yeah. Choice Mask get back at it, man. You know, like I say, you know, he been, uh, he been under the radar, uh, for a little bit, um, you know, and I was just kind of wondering what was the status as far as, uh, as far as truckers feeding the homeless because I think he did a he he did a live feed, uh saying that it was still on but uh of course the date came and the date passed so you know i just didn't hear uh well i i thought i had seen i thought i had i thought i had seen something about it being pushed to the end of august but beyond that i i honestly don't know um, okay. Like I said, I've been, I've had my head in other places. Once in a while, I have checked in um, with the guys over there um, on the stoop. I think the last time I spoke to somebody was about three weeks ago. Okay. And uh, the the fellow that I spoke to over there said that, yeah, Twitch was under the weather with his, with his ankle. Okay. So How are they doing? That's, that's how, about, that's all I know. <laughs> how, how are all of them doing over there? Are they doing all right? Yeah, they're good. They're busy driving. Okay. Which is that's, a good thing. That's that that is a good thing. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Yeah, definitely uh get well, choice mass. Definitely get well. Um all right, so Sonny Rob, you 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 from you from the New York area, right? Um we talk mm-hmm. uh we was we was in a we was in a green room and I was getting set up and uh of course uh the news came out about uh about Jam Master J and uh and Run DMC. Mm-hmm. Now they came uh they they finally caught the or not caught but they finally made a rest in the 2002 murder of Jam Master J. Damn, over over 20 right. years. 
of of this case being cold. Um, now I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, I was talking to the LOM community, but I got a, uh, I got you know, I got somebody that texted me yesterday and told me that uh, that this was a drug deal that went wrong with uh, with Jam Master J, and I felt. When I said I don't think there was a drug deal at all, I I thought it was a robbery, but they said that it was actually mm -hmm. a drug deal. But what do I know? I I, I don't know. I I just uh, you know, I'm just a fan. Definitely, definitely disappointed in the fact that he was killed. Um, but 20 years mm -hmm. later, uh, they 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 caught the guys, uh, 36 year old. Uh, Carl Jordan, he would have been six, no, 20, no, 16. Yeah, 16. 20, yeah, 30, yeah, 20 years ago, he would have been 16. And 56 year old Ronald Washington, hey. now he would have been 36. So 16 mm -hmm. and 36, respectively. Wow, a sixteen-year-old. What's your? Uh, yeah, what's, that's a little your, disturbing. <laughs> that is disturbing. That's that's very disturbing. What's your uh, What's your thoughts about that? Because you 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 know you you posted it in your uh, your Instagram. I was very surprised to see it, and and frankly, I mean, I was very happy to see that they that they caught the person who did it and that you know that they didn't give up on the investigation um and that seems to be happening a lot more nowadays where you see things pop up in the news where oh you know the killer <clears throat> the killer of this lady that was found in the woods has just been identified 30 40 years later um you know i i'm i'm imagining that this will bring at least some comfort to the family you know, nobody likes to see, excuse me, nobody likes to see someone killed and, you know, not know who did it. And um, I think it, it was just, it was an interesting that it came up and that, you know, that, that the folks were caught. Yeah. I'm and like, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, it's definitely a good thing. I, I was disappointed when I, when I, when I found out that he was killed, you know, during my young years, you know, back then I was in my thirties, mm -hmm. but I, I've been a fan of Run DMC since the eighties. I mean, I, they last album, no, mm -hmm. they, they, they last uh, studio album, not so much, but you know, definitely when hip hop was golden back in New York and everything, and they was all part of the movement, uh, the fat boys, Curtis blow, uh, you know, and the rest mm -hmm. of them guys, I, you know, I, I, I grew up with wearing DMCs, the actual godfathers of, of hip hop. And yeah, like I said, I, I was definitely, right. definitely upset that they, uh, that he got killed and everything. So, but, um, mm, sure. But yeah, man. Yeah. So Sonny Rob, what makes you, uh, what makes you stand out? What makes you different than, uh, well, you in the bus driver industry, but you still drive. But what makes you stand out? Because I, I was about to say what makes you stand out is that you got your class A's and I'm assuming everybody else got the class B's. But what makes you stand out in the in, in the crowd? What makes you different? At work? Or <laughs> yeah. What makes you different or, at or work? At yeah. Diff in we'll set you, yeah. In general, you know, what sets you apart from other drivers? Well, uh, I guess probably because I, I came up pretty quickly. Um, I'm a trainer. I mean, you know, not, not a lot of drivers are asked to be trainers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess, you know, my performance, I'm, I, I don't really, it's kind of hard to say, um, I think I'm I'm more of a humble person. I don't I don't usually 
analyze, you know, what makes me stand out. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think it's just, I'm good with kids. Um, I'm a very good driver. I've always loved driving and driving big vehicles. I even, I don't think I mentioned this last time, but I also used to substitute drive ambulances as well. Okay. And, uh, that's a whole different kettle of fish, <laughs> but, um, uh, I guess my versatility. I guess you could say my versatility, and and I'm also cool and calm, and 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 I'm I'm good in in situations. Now you know uh, my man D Nitty. Shout out to D Nitty. He's from uh, he's from up north. He's from New York, uh, New York down. He sent me a he sent me an article that I wanted that I want to get your. Uh, that I wanted to get your opinion on. Um, okay. The article was sure. this driver drove, I actually, actually drove over a bridge here in Missouri. That's where I'm at right now, Missouri. Go hmm. figure. Um, okay. The bridge was weighted at about 10, uh, 10,000 pounds. And unfortunately, this, uh, I want to say inexperienced driver drove over the bridge at about 40,000 pounds, but, uh, the bridge collapsed mm. and the, and the truck and trailer <clears throat> snapped in half. Um, a lot of people, a lot oh. of people say that, uh, a lot of people say that, uh, you know, his GPS guided him over, over mm. the bridge, but, um, I, I say mm -hmm. you if that was the case, you gotta be a little bit more uh uh you gotta have a little bit more common sense. I mean if the bridge is weighted ten thousand pounds. Yes, you do. If it's weighted ten thousand pounds and you're you're overweight by forty thousand pounds, common sense should tell you not to go over that bridge. What do you what do you say to what do you say to uh drivers that get in situations like that? What do you, what's your opinion on it? Well, we actually had a situation two years ago where um, a lady co-worker uh, actually tore off, nearly tore off the roof of one of the buses because she did not heed the sign that said uh, that, the, uh, that the underpass was only 10 feet. And even though the bus is, is, you know, 10 feet itself, when she went, it kind of was a funny um, overpass where you would kind of go up a hill a little bit and it, it just, it caught her. And she, <laughs> you know, she nearly tore, tore the top off. But when I, when I train people to, you know, upgrade into an S endorsement or even just at their CDL in general, one of the things I emphasize is, you know, you must be aware of your surroundings and you must watch the signs and heed them. <laughs> you know, if it says, you know, don't, no vehicles over four tons go up this road, you don't go, you know, unless, unless you are um, past to go local, you know, because a lot of uh, neighborhoods around here, there will be signs that say no vehicles over four tons, but uh, school buses and delivery trucks are exempt. So there's that. But there are times when you will see some signs that say, you know, big signs, no vehicles at all can go on this road then you have to take a different way. <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. it's, it's, ugh. <laughs> it's, 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 I, it's, I know. Um, it's not quite. Yeah. I, right. I mean, it's, we, we're both speechless on, 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 on this matter. And, and, <laughs> and it's a lot of, and it's a lot of drivers <laughs> that get caught up in situations like that. And I, I would suggest, I, I, I would suggest that you guys really pay attention to, you know, to the signage. D Nitty says they always have signs. Uh, 
Michael Watts, what's going on? How you feel? Welcome to the uh, welcome to the show. Uh, but D Nitty said they all they always have signs. I think ain't New York. Yeah. It's somewhere in New York that has that that uh, that eleven foot bridge that catches a lot of drivers all the time. I, it's it's oh, a, yeah. it's a video on YouTube called the eleven foot bridge, and I mean drivers just <laughs> unbelievably just get caught by that bridge. There was there was a CR or CR CR England driver. Uh, recently, that was on the thorough that was on the uh, thoroughway and um, tore rip ripped the trailer open like a can of sardines. So, so yeah, right. There there are a couple of in, in New York City there, and once you in, in New York City, and then once you um, come out of the city, there are a couple of roadways that are called parkways okay mm -hmm. and if if the name of the road says parkway after it you don't take a truck on <laughs> because that's where you have really low bridges and you know there have been several trucks over the years that have done that and you know that's when that's when you get the problem with them getting stuck underneath because uh the parkways Parkways are meant for cars, not trucks. Exactly. And it's the same in New Jersey. I mean, if you get on the Garden State Parkway, you that's for a car, not a truck. And, you know, those are parkways that go up into Connecticut, too. So anything that says parkway, don't use it. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Sonny Rob, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. Chopping it up with me. What um? Oh, my pleasure. What what advice? What advice do you have for for uh for young drivers that's coming out here, uh, into this game? Either either in the in the trucking industry or what you're in in the in the uh bus industry. Pamela Hil Pamela Hilton said hi, Sonny Rob. <laughs> hi, Pamela. <laughs> Uh, I think my advice would be, my number one advice is following distance. That I tell my son that all the time because he just got his wife. Well, okay, your son, uh, your, your I, younger you son know, or, or I, I cannot, your younger, yeah. your younger son or your old, nope. or your oldest. No, my, my guy that's in college. Oh, he's, he's in college. Oh, and he got a CDL? Yeah. Mm hmm no, no, no. He just got his regular license. Oh, I was about, yeah, I was getting my thought together so I can ask you some questions <laughs> about that. I was about to say, okay, he's in college and he got a CD. Okay, he just got his driver's license. Okay, got it, got it. All right, yes, but she was telling, but she was telling yep. him, you was telling him about, uh, you you was telling him about uh about what now? Following distance. Mm-hmm. Following distance is the key to safety. You know, that I, I can't emphasize that enough. I have seen way too many accidents happen um, when people have not been, you know, following correctly. And, you know, in, in every bad weather condition, as, as the worse it gets, the more time you need to leave between you and the vehicle in front of you. Um, you know, I, I believe at least for school buses, you have to add one second for every um, bad road condition, you know. So that's it. I can't emphasize that enough. It's, it's, it's critical. I mean, you, of course, you have to be aware of your surroundings um, and the following distance. And, you know, if, if you were and, – and, I have done long, actually I've done long trips on school buses. Long meaning, you know, maybe about out 250 miles, which is, is, is far for us. You know, if you get, if you get a little sleepy, pull over. That's, that's also very important. All right. All right. Hey, before I get up out of here, did they, did they open up that new uh, mall out there yet? It's supposed to be like uh, it's supposed to be a new mall that's opening up out there, just like uh, 
the slight mall of America. I was gonna make a I was gonna make a staycation out that way, right. but did did they open that up yet? As far as I know, I don't think they have because I haven't seen anything about it in the news. No hoopla yet. So okay. I don't think they have. Yeah, they for the regular shopping malls, they only just opened uh, like two weeks ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. So as far yep. as as far as the couple pan- of weeks ago, as far as the pandemic that's still going on up there. Uh, hold on, right quick. Daniela Lopez. Uh, don't know what that means. Is don't know what that means. <laughs> um. But welcome, welcome, thank you. Um, but during the pandemic up there, uh, has the has the cases came down some, or or where where they at as far as cases goes? Uh, we still get them. I mean, they're they're way down. But the governor is concerned because the last couple of days, the um, the transmission rate has gone up. Uh, what what he wants to see is for every person that is infected, less than one person have a less than one person transmission rate. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, it's back up above one to one. So he's not happy about that. Oh, okay. um, but hopefully, it won't get up. Because I think uh, when you and I talked last, mm-hmm. the transmission rate was up to five. <laughs> right. So we're, we're really hoping that, that it doesn't get anywhere near that bad again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, Sonny Rob in yeah. the building. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for stopping by, you know, hooking up. Uh, coming back to talk to me. You are always, always, always welcome to come on the Lockout Man podcast show to chop it up with me, ma'am. Use an awesome conversation. Well, thank you. It was lovely being on your show. I appreciate you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you guys want to come thank on. Thank you. You too. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with the Lockout Man, you can do that. You can do that. I'm right here. Right here. Yo, hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or, or go over to Instagram because, you know, I'm heavy on Instagram. So go over there and hit me up in the DM. Or you could just, you know, do the old-fashioned way, you know. Me and Sonny Rob, we're old schoolers. You know what I'm saying? All this new technology is new to us. (laughs) (laughs) Right. You know, we come from right. sna- we come from snail mail and and the telephones just hanging up on the walls and stuff like that. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all don't know exactly. nothing about that. Exactly. Our our FaceTime our FaceTime was was being outside up under the up under the lights talking to our friends. Hey, how you doing, Johnny? What's going on, Betty? What's going on? That's that was our FaceTime right there, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Right. If you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button when I come on. If you want to definitely support the boy, you can do that by hitting me up with the cash app, dollar sign lockout men, or hit me up with some coffee in the coffee app. And on this note, I'm about to get played out by somebody. I don't know who it is, but somebody going to play me out. And why they doing that? I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it. Definitely, if you like the content, definitely support it you know what i'm saying youtube i still get a thing or two but this this is our only outlet so i give the platform to any any and everybody that want to come on and chop it up on that note you guys take it easy i have a beautiful blessed day and i will come back at you with another video peace my style is refreshing. It feel like I'm water to y'all. That's why it's hard for me to take a break, because they'll go through a water withdrawal. I'm sunning these niggas. Uh-huh. It's like I'm a father to y'all. Talk, talk. And you can see the way your kid act and tell if his father involved. Yeah. I think I've been missing in action. I'ma beat them till they get it right. I'm feeling just like a Joe Jackson. Yeah. Buzzing and I'm building traction. Yeah. Where I'm at is where I thought I'd go. A lot of people.